Caching is really important if you want your bot to perform better. In this video, I'll be showing you how to implement caching using Redis to avoid unnecessary calls to your database. However, this is not limited to databases. You can also implement this for an external API. But first, let's take a look at a bot without a caching layer. So in this example, we have our users who are going to be over at Discord and they're going to be sending a request to our Discord bot. Now, I want you to imagine this Discord bot as our Node.js server because that's what it actually is. Our Node.js server has to go fetch the data that the user wants from a database. If the data exists, then of course the Node.js server is going to take that data and send it back to the user. Now this is totally fine if your bot is small, but if you care about performance or if your bot is starting to receive a ton of requests from say the same person or you're having to deal with similar data but you're having to fetch it over and over again, you can imagine this thing can get pretty slow because your database is getting a ton of requests. So now let's take a look at a bot with a caching layer. So in this example, we have a Redis cache. That's what we're going to be using today. In this example, the user sends a request to a Node.js server. Our Node.js server is going to first check the Redis cache and it's going to see if the data that the user wants or the data that we want to deal with exists in the cache. If it does exist in the cache, then we're just going to take that data, deal with it, or we can send it back to the user. However, if the data does not exist, we're going to go over to the database, fetch the data, and before we send it back to the user, what we're going to do is we're going to store that data in the cache and set a time limit of say 30 seconds or 60 seconds, depending on how long you want the data to stay there. But once we set a time limit, we can take that data and send it back to the user. Now, the next time this user comes around or another user comes around, who wants the same data, we can just go ahead and fetch the data from the Redis cache and directly return it back to the user instead of having to call the database every single time. To start off, we need to set up Redis. You can either set up Redis locally, which is what I'm going to be doing in this video. However, you can even set up a remote Redis cache. Now, I'm not exactly sure about the performance hit that you're getting here because it is another server that you're dealing with. But to avoid performance hit, you probably want to have your remote cache as close as possible to your host server. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be using a local Redis cache, which means I downloaded this right here. I'll have the link to this down below. However, if you're on Windows, the installation is actually a little bit different because Redis does not officially support Windows. You're going to have to use the Windows subsystem for Linux, which to be honest, the installation process is not that complicated. You can get this set up pretty easily. However, if you don't want to go through that hassle, then you can use a remote cache as I mentioned. Now Redis themselves offer a free tier with multiple regions, so you can use this or you can even use something like Upstash. Upstash even has a Redis setup for free, so you can feel free to use this as well. Now after you set up your remote Redis cache, you're going to get a connection string just like you would with MongoDB Atlas. What I want you to do is copy the connection string and we're going to get back to it in just a moment. Now in VS Code, let's go ahead and install an NPM library called IO Redis. So I'm going to say NPM install IO Redis and hit enter. We're going to be using this library to communicate with our Redis cache. So let's go ahead and deal with that. Inside the source folder, I'm going to create another folder called lib. And inside this, I'm going to create a file called redis.js. Now from here, let's go ahead and import Redis using require IO Redis. And we are going to be importing the Redis class. So now let's go ahead and define our Redis server. And this is going to be a new instance of this Redis class. And if you're using a local Redis instance like I am, then you don't have to do anything else. However, if you're using a remote server, then you're going to have to put your connection string over here. So anyway, once you have set up your Redis, we can go ahead and export this. So I'm going to say module.exports and export Redis. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file and we can close out of it. Now, let me give you an overview of the rest of the project. We have a folder called models. Inside this, we have a schema, our user schema, which stores the ID, balance, XP and level. So basically in this video, we're going to be fetching a user and we're going to be updating a user. So I'm going to show you how to implement caching for these commands. Speaking of commands, let's see what the commands look like. We actually have three commands. One is create user, which I've already executed because I have a user profile. But if you want the source code, feel free to copy this. 
Now this one doesn't really require caching, so we're just going to ignore this command file completely. The ones that we care about is the get user and add xp. So let's start with get user. As the description says, it gets user information. Basically, when the user runs this command, we're going to find them in the database and we're going to reply to them with their data. Now over here, I'm actually sending back the whole user object as a string. Uh, I did that to save time, but of course, you're going to be dealing with individual pieces of data. And in the add XP, what we're doing is we're finding the user. If the user does not exist, we tell them to run the create user command. And what we do is we update their profile and we add 10 XP. After we do that, we go ahead and reply to them with XP increased. So really basic commands, but now let's go ahead and implement Redis to this. So let's go ahead and get started with the get user command. Let's go ahead and get started by importing our Redis instance. So I'm going to say const Redis equals to require, and we're going to go up to the lib folder and we're going to import Redis. So if you don't know, our Redis instance has a key and a value, basically like an object. So our key in this case is going to be an ID and the value is going to be the object. The object is going to be stringified using json.stringify like so. And every time we retrieve it, we're going to have to parse it. So before we call our database using find one, let's go ahead and check our Redis cache. So what I'm going to say is const result equals to await redis.get. And this get method is going to take in our key. This key is going to be the ID of our user. So I'm going to say interaction.user.id. Now over here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove this let keyword and I'm going to say let user like so. Now let's check if we have a result from Redis. So I'm going to say if result, then we can set our user variable to json.parse and we can go ahead and pass in the result because if you remember, our result is actually a string. So we have to parse it to turn it into an object. Now we can actually also go ahead and set an else statement if we don't hit our cache and we can take this and pass it in our else statement. So now you may think that this code is fine because we're checking the cache to see if the user exists. If they exist, then we're just parsing it and we're applying to the user by sending them their object. However, you may not realize this, but we're not actually updating our cache. So basically what this means is after we find our user and if the user does not exist in the database, then over here, we know for certain the code below this is only going to run if we fetched a user from the database. Because if we didn't find a user, then this right here will run and the function is going to return. So what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and update our Redis cache. So the way we can do that is we can say await redis.set. And the first thing that we're going to pass in is the key. If you remember, our key is the ID of the user. So I'm going to say interaction.user.id and then the data that we want to pass in, which needs to be stringified. So I'm going to say json.stringify and I'm going to go ahead and pass in this user that we got from the database. And then the next argument is going to be this string called ex. So with this, we're basically telling Redis that this next argument is going to be the time that we want to set for this cache to expire. So in this case, this is going to be 60 seconds. After 60 seconds, Redis is going to remove this data from the Redis cache. Now, 60 seconds is what I am using, but you can change this to whatever you want it to be. So anyway, we can go ahead and save this and we can start our bot. Now, if I run my get user command, then it is going to return our entire user object. However, we're not actually noticing the performance gain here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to VS code and I'm going to create a variable right after this. And this variable name is going to be cache hit. And this is going to be a Boolean. So if we get a result from Redis, then we're going to go ahead and set cache hit to true like so. However, if we didn't get the result, then we're going to set cache hit to false. Now we can use this cache hit and we're going to go ahead and reply to the user by I'm actually going to add this over here and I'm going to say cache hit and I'm going to pass in the cache hit variable. So this is going to be true or false, but we're going to know when we run the command if we got the result from the cache or the database. But how will we actually know if it's faster? Well, Node.js, I believe after version 18, 
introduced a performance module. So we can go ahead and before trying to fetch from Redis, I can create a variable called start time and set this to performance dot now. And this is going to be a number in milliseconds. So we have the start time of when the function was called. Let's go ahead and create another variable. And I'm going to create this variable right before we reply. So I'm going to call this end time. And I'm going to set this to performance dot now once again. Now the difference between end time and start time is going to be our total duration. So I'm going to create another variable called duration and set this to end time minus start time. And I'm just going to round this number off to two decimal points. So I'm going to say two fixed and round it off to two decimal points. And right after this cache hit, I'm going to go ahead and pass in the duration and say milliseconds like so. So I'm going to save this and I believe it's already been 60 seconds. So I'm going to restart my bot. So let's go back to Discord and I'm going to try to run this command once again. So as you can see, we get the user object and over here it says cache hit false and the time is 22.37 milliseconds. If I try to run it again, because now this data is in the cache, so I'm going to run it again. And this time it's actually gone down to 0 0.63 milliseconds. So right off the bat, you can see the performance gains is absolutely insane. And I should point out that I'm using both my MongoDB database and the Redis cache locally. So this is pretty fair. So that's about it for the get user command. Let's move on to our other command, which we are using to update the user. So this command is called add XP. Now, once again, before we use the find one method to actually retrieve the data from the database, we can go ahead and create a variable called result. And this is going to be await Redis. And we have not imported our Redis instance. So let's go to the top and say const Redis equals to require. Go up to the lib folder and import the Redis.js file. So I'm going to say const Redis equals to await Redis dot get. And if you remember, our key is the user ID, which is interaction dot user dot ID. Now we're going to say if result, and we're also going to have an else statement. This else statement is going to have this user inside like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this let keyword, and I'm going to create a variable out here called user. And now if the result exists, then we can set our user variable to that result. So I'm going to say user equals to json.parse because as you remember, we're storing it as a string. So we need to parse it back to an object. So I'm going to say json.parse result. And also I'm going to copy this if not user reply thingy and I'm going to put it in here as well. So as you can see down here, what we're doing is we are finding the user and updating them. Now, I don't really recommend using the user object to update the user like user.save. If you use Mongoose, then you know that this function is used to update the user object. However, this is not going to be valid if the data is from Redis. So what we need to do instead is we need to find one and update. So you want to keep this in mind. So what we're doing here is we're saying find one and update. We're finding the user using their ID and then we're adding 10 to the XP. However, I want to update this user object to have the latest data from MongoDB. So I'm going to set this to user equals to await user.find one and update. However, there's still one slight problem, and that is that this user object is not going to have the latest data. It's still going to have the old XP. It's not going to have this new 10 XP that we just added. To get that, we can return a new user object by adding another object over here called new and setting this to true. So when this function is called, it is going to return the new user object and set it to this variable. So anyway, now that we have this new user variable, we can go ahead and update our cache as well. So I'm going to say await redis.set and our key is interaction user ID. Our body is going to be a string of this latest user data, which is going to be json.stringify and pass in user. Then we need to pass in ex and the duration is going to be 60 seconds. So after 60 seconds, this user data is going to expire. So this command is ready to be used. However, we need to measure our performance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the performance module once again. And at the start of this function, I'm going to create a variable called start time. And I'm going to set this to performance dot now. 
Oh, by the way, the performance module requires Node.js version 16, not 18, like I mentioned earlier. So now that we have the start time, we can also create another variable over here called cache hit. And once again, this is going to be a Boolean. And if we have a result from Redis, then the cache hit is going to be true. Otherwise, the cache hit is going to be false. So after we set our Redis cache, I'm going to define end time and set this to performance dot now. And our duration is once again going to be end time minus start time. And I'm going to round this off to two decimal points like so. And in our reply message, we can add a new line and I'm going to concatenate a string where I'm going to say cache hit and I'm going to pass the cache hit variable. And then we're going to pass in the time. So I'm going to say duration milliseconds. Let's save it and let's try to restart our bots. So back in Redis, I'm going to run the add XP command. So the first time it took 45 milliseconds. If I try once again, it took 11.8 milliseconds. So the first one, as you can see, the cache hit was false and it had to call the database twice. And the reason why I say twice is because the first time when there was no cache, we had to find the user in the database and then we had to find them and update them. As opposed to if we had the cache, we're only making one database call and that database call is for updating the user. So now if we try to do this once again, cache hit is still true because 60 seconds did not pass and we're still getting a lot less time and our bot is extremely fast. So that's about it when it comes to caching. If this video helped you out, you may be interested in watching this video where I go over how to create a chat GPT Discord bot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.